I'm Olivia Higgins, and you're watching Playing With Fire, where we cover the hottest topics in the investment world. Today, we are with a special guest. We'll be discussing the electric vehicle market. So come over, take a seat at the table and have a conversation with us. So Josh is the institutional sales head at Moomoo Moo Singapore. And we're very grateful to have you here today. Hi, Josh. Hi, how are you? How are you? I'm good. How are you? Good, good. good. Yeah? yeah? So the audience would love to know, why EV? Why should they even care? Uh, apparently for us, it's, um, you know, if you see the markets for the past one year, yeah. one of the outperformers, which is EV markets. So mm. everyone knows about EV. You can see more EV cars on the streets. Yes. You can see more uh, brands appear, mm. EV and all these names. Yeah, that's why everyone talking about Yeah, it's, it's a hot topic. It and it's been like that since 2020. That's right. That's yeah? right. Because they thought EV can change the world, just like what iPhone did. Mm. Yeah. Here exactly. Now. Yeah, here now. And now it seems that the conversation is shifting to mm. the Chinese EV market. That's Maybe right. you can tell me why they should care about that. Now, I think the productivity in China is mm. compared to, to other countries. Of course, due to the COVID pandemic, uh, China is, uh, is still ongoing all these things. They can deliver. They mm. do a mega factory for Tesla and also for exactly. other manufacturers. So at the end of the day, until today, yeah, you're talking about maybe in Europe is still short of manpower. Mm. In US is still the COVID is still <laughs> yeah. is still there. But in China <laughs> everything is kind of back to normal. So they mm. can product produce the car and deliver the car. Mm. And in terms of producing and putting together everything, that's the hardware part. What about the software element? Yeah, I think software element is the, the critical part to make mm. EV so different from the traditional cars. Because uh, when you use a car, uh, of course, you can see dif different user experience is so yes. different. Yes. Just like maybe the navigation in the in terms of how they got you to the right place yes. and how the information, mm. let's say that even you say use an iPhone, you do have a CarPlay, all these things. Mm. So this will change the EV, make EV so different and so charming. Right. So the self-driving element, for example, yeah. I'm, I'm very interested in that. Yeah, that's <laughs> so right. yeah, tell, tell us more about that in terms of, you know, is a software like that going to shape in terms of like, the investment behavior of someone watching and, and they're like, I want to get into the EV stock market. Yeah, that's right. I think for the EV stock markets, you can see, if you say, if you're talking about self-driving, I think the one uh, stock you may not able to avoid, yes. which is uh, NVIDIA. Okay. So they do the GPU, then they, of course, NVIDIA, they do have other other functions that GPU can do other mm. things, but of course, self uh, driving is mm. one of the setting point or the function they can provide to the human beings. And now you can see the NVIDIA price is going mm. up and up. Uh, now, and um, of course, so so people find feel that if you do the car can self driving, they can have more time to do other things. Yeah. So it's kind of you know the self driving will change the world, and just like what iPhone did. Yes. So it becomes from a phone to smartphone, the mm. car from the smart car. Yes. And yeah. So I think in terms of investment in stock markets. <laughs> Everyone say, okay, maybe you say you talk, you, 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 you who knows, who knows, right? Yeah, you never know. Yeah, so people just want to self drive so they can play video games. That's right, maybe, perhaps, perhaps, yeah. Or after a night out with yeah, your friends. That's right. And also, you can drink and. Uh, yeah, I'm exactly. Also, it might yeah. solve that issue, right? Of yeah, like, it could be. It's a drink and drive. So who knows? Yeah, yeah, that's right. So at the end of the day, it's about problem solving, right? And That's offering right. An added, added value service. Yeah, so if you, if you talk 20 years ago, what, what the phone can do, mm. you can call your friends, you can message your friends, that's yeah. all. But what the phone can do now, you cannot go out, leave the house without the phone. Of course, yeah. it's, it's basically an organ in our body. That's right, that's right. That's right. <laughs> okay, so in terms of an investor, if I want to get into the Chinese EV market, yep. We've got two camps, right? We've got those who are just on the sidelines watching uh, and yes. they cannot make a decision. Mm -hmm. And then you've got the other camp who are already in it and making predictions about mm -hmm. what will go up and down. Yeah. How do you think you know, a person who is new, completely new, or maybe a little intimidated to the EV market, 
how can they start? I think for in terms of investments, uh, not only about EV, mar EV mm. sectors, but also other sectors, yeah. talking about the meta, uh, all these different the topics. Mm. I think one critical part is uh, how you diversify your portfolio. So which means that, mm. you know, for certain companies, if you put just invest in one company, then you risk everything in this in that company. Mm. If that company is going down, then yeah, you rule the whole thing. But yeah. uh, so just keep in mind, diversification is uh, the key to the other new investors, especially mm. for if you don't have time to do the analysis, you don't even know what the company do. Uh, let's say for Rebivian, this is, a, this is the one of the hot topic in the market. Yes. But actually for all the Rebivian, all the cars is still on the paper. Mm. They cannot deliver because uh, the manufacturing, the productivity is on there. They don't, have, they don't even have a It does fact. not match yes, at match. the moment. That's right. Okay, so that brings me to my next point. You know, like there is this, all this talk in terms of policies, future plans, strategies from governments now. You know, you're not talking about just the Singapore 2040 plan for EV market, but we're also looking at the Chinese market, which plans to be the biggest um, manufacturer of EVs, yes. right? By 2050, yep. yeah? And so, like you, like you mentioned, in Shanghai, China, yep. they're building the biggest factory and they've got the market to support it. Yes, so yes. How, how is that going to turn out in the next five to 10 years, since you know, the, we're still quite early in the stage of EVs? Yeah, I think the government is very, is a critical factor for the EV, uh, how they can you know, expand the industry. So of course, if I say in China, the 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 government give the subsidy. If you buy an EV car, mm. you can get some tax rebates. And of course, for the manufacturers, if you produce EV, you can get subsidy as well. So does actually, that work though? Uh, so far, yes. I think <laughs> I, I do have the data. I think in November, mm. so actually China, nineteen percent of the car mm. sell to the customer is EV cars. So, oh. And in twenty twenty, yeah. that is about five percent. So actually, you can see the fourteen percent increment year to year. Of course, you may you may see different factors. People know more about EV. I think I'm pretty sure the government policies or the subsidy will play an important parts to in, to drive the number up. Yeah. So so this is one thing for the consumer side. But for the manufacturer side, they, if they do have a subsidy, which means they can have a they can reduce the price. Mm. If, you, if you say the news about the new, they, yeah. just, uh, they just do a press release and they, they, they introduce the new car, they call ET, ET5. ET5. ET5, yes, yeah. yes, yes, that's a very popular one. That's right. Yeah. Why, make so, why make this ET5 so popular? Because it's cheap. Now they can have the same model, the fancy one, the fancy car, by the cheap price, which is, two, uh, I think now in China they sell about 250 RMB. Uh, 250,000 RMB. Mm. The previous version is about 400,000. So you can see the decrease in the price, and which means the younger people, the young generation, they can they, afford it. Oh, they can they afford, can afford. Yeah. They, they can uh. afford with a cheaper price. Mm. And of course, they can have a they can have an EV car, they can share with their friends, they can, they can say, oh, okay, I can use this software on the car, okay. I can use that on the car. Yeah. So I think the whole thing, it become an ecosystem. So back to the point about diversification, right, of the portfolio. I would like to know for the audience and for myself, how exactly can I get into that? Because we talk about diversification like as if it's very easy, but what are the actual practical ways people can start with this investment? I think one simple way is you can just invest in one certain ETF. So because ETF. well, ETFs, mm. right. because ETF will track certain factors. I think now the Nico AM they do have a new uh, China EV ETF, which means they will track all the China com uh, EV relevant companies. And uh, if you don't have time to do the analysis one by one, the company, what they do, what is the forecast, what is the projection, then I, I think the one simple solution for you for your questions will be just invest in ETF. Okay. Yeah. And in terms of ETFs, you've got the general Chinese EV market, you've got the EV market yes. outside of China, yes. and then you've got NEVs, which are the neighborhood EVs. Yep. Could you tell me more about that? I think for the NEVs, <laughs> it could be a, the second uh, so-called new trend of mm. the EV car, because most of the time you're talking about Tesla. 
uh, I think you're talking about two hundred thousand SGD. Okay. And you're talking any EV car is uh, is uh, is about two hundred thousand. Of course. So, but I think for the NEVs, which means you can use in the neighborhoods. But because for us, is that we come to office every day, then go home. So we don't need to have you know a very super super powerful engine, you yes. know, a fancy uh, model kind of thing. So for the mm. NEV, the price will be cheaper, and but it will be very popular. So among all the users, mm. uh, especially for for the country states like Singapore, is uh, more functional than com- if you compare to China to other countries. So in terms of the NEV market, I think it's very interesting because I want to go into Singapore. I find it fascinating how with the 2040 plan. They've got all these, you know, grand incentives, giving you know road tax incentives, for example. Yep. But in terms of the infrastructure, how do you think Singapore can can match up to that by twenty forty? I think in Singapore itself uh, is because it's a city state, so mm. which means the size is there. And I think for infrastructure, it takes less time to catch up with uh, all these countries like China, U.S., and the Europe, European countries. Yes. I think the EV infrastructures mm. and all the incentive or subsidies will be play a very important part in, in, within the budgets. Right, yeah. and th- we're talking about even just the fast charging places and being able to have that ex- accessibility everywhere yeah. in Singapore, right? And I think that's also quite uh, a line point with the smart city um, right. plan, right? That's right. <laughs> yeah, I think it's, uh, it's all things. So if Futuristic. You a, yeah, that's right. So if you do have an EV, the EV can provide you the better software. Yeah. Then you can use the software to connect everything. It's kind of IoT. Uh, so it's all connected. This mm. is, I think, the, net, the governments want to achieve the same goal as a smart nation. So with all this, right, we've got the Singapore EV market, we've got the Europe, Europeans, we've got the US market, which is the most popular at the moment. Does anyone see China uprising? (laughs) Uh, That's right, that's for sure, because the demand is there. So, uh, of course, I think for the market, if they do have China, if you're talking about the countries, uh, Southeast Asia countries, Mm. China is, uh, is, is, is the neighbor. So, which means when they produce, when they do the new cars, they can just export to to other to the, all these countries. Absolutely. But since you see all these governments, especially in Southeast Asia, they're talking about EV. They want to put, they want to reduce the emission of the the carbon. So, mm-hmm. I think China will play a very important part of the holding. China wants to do it by twenty thirty five. That's right. In terms of manufacturing. That's right. Yeah. How is that linked to, for example, a Singaporean that wants to get into the investment? Um, portfolio of these companies? Mm, I think it's, uh, I mean, it's very hard to say because mm. apparently it produced, to do some R&D is not, you know, just like <laughs> by a higher engineer, they can bring something new to yes. you. It takes time, it takes efforts, it takes, it could be success or fail, so it, you, you will never know. Never but know. You can, you They're can just tell, taking their shot. Yeah, but if the government as a, as a bring, just drive the whole thing forward, because the power of government is so different from the company enterprise or the corporate level. Mm. So if everybody is doing the same, aiming the same direction, yeah. Uh, yeah, I think the chance of success will be much, much higher. So something really interesting is yes. my own dad. Oh. He keeps talking about it over dinner all the time. He's a big, big supporter of EV. Um, and he invests as well, but he's always looking for the next thing. So one thing he keeps bringing up is, for example, in terms of hardware or even the interior design, yep. he thinks that the major software leaders like Tesla, even you know several Chinese EVs at the moment, they do not match up in terms of creating that whole you know experience that you have in a car. So do you think you know with China and their competitors Europe and US mainly will they be able to find that sweet spot between software design and hardware? Of course that's for sure because yeah? uh, the, if there is a demand there from mm. the customer I'm pretty sure all the car manufacturers no matter it's from European or from China, from US, or the brands, they were trying their very best to fulfill these requirements mm. because the demand, market demand is there. Yeah, so it, it, I mean, not to say maybe next month or next next six months, but 
give, give, give them some time mm -hmm. and see how it goes. I'm pretty sure these will fulfill all these requirements. Right, so we've got the hybrids. That's right. But then we've got the luxury EVs that yeah. are upcoming. Yep. A lot of the discussion online is about whether it would oversaturate mm. the Chinese luxury EV market. Yeah. What do you think? Uh, I think because, uh, first of all, if the governments uh, set the tones, which means they give a subsidy, they give uh, their policy in favor of uh, these EV markets, then of course all the people, all the companies want to take a portion. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, at the end of the day, it's still markets, money yeah. into the com competition. Mm just make the best car win the game. I'm pretty sure for certain, during the certain stage, those all performer, the outstanding companies, will just make the markets. So the EV race has started and it's going in full gear at That's the right. moment. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Okay. So what is one thing that young investors can look out for in 2022 for EVs? For EVs, I think, uh, in, t in terms, because you, you're talking about investments, it could mm. be two different things. One is about the brand names. I say for all the names, you know, Tesla and Xiaopeng, or you can say Neo, or these China mm. names. This is the one thing. But the other thing is about the components of the car. So what is the most critical component of the EV car? You could say software. You could say battery. The it battery. Is, yeah, yeah, battery, yes. It's thing. So I think battery could be the important part. Because uh, if in Singapore itself, it may not have to fill. But if in China, during winter time, I, it's, yes. during winter time, <laughs> you're driving. Hour, that's right. <laughs> so temperature will change everything. Yeah. So the battery could be the, uh, the new break point for the EV industry. There were problems, right, with this? People driving in winter. That's right. And it, they don't have a port to go to, or the battery doesn't last. And, That's and a huge one. The engine, the engine <laughs> I'm scared of that. Difference in, during the summertime mm. and wintertime. So in wintertime, maybe if you're on the heater, then of course the distance you can go will be different. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Well, thank you, Josh, for all of that. We really appreciated your insightful knowledge. But now it's quite an exciting part. We've got some Q and A well, questions well, from our community. <laughs> So I'm going to pull up some <laughs> of my favorite questions. I will try my best. And I think, yeah, it, I would love to know the answers to these. So the first question we've got is, how will the Chinese EV industry overcome the global chip um, shortage problem? Oh, I think for China, uh, the chip shortage is still is, is a global issue here. And mm. uh, not only about the car, but also, you know, if the game, the even PS5, it's yes. <laughs> same issue here. And of, of course, how we can overcome it's not only about China. It's mm. because we the, all the countries are linked. Yeah, so it's, 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 uh, it's not only about China. And uh, we, I may say, we see how the COVID goes. If the manpower issue resolves in certain countries, yeah, they will resolve everything. It takes time. It takes time and it's not... But it's getting well, better. It's not only China's so. issue. Yeah. Yes, okay. And um, what do you think about this question? Why is the NEO stock doing badly, although oh. EVs are in the future? <laughs> I, I see, because uh, apparently for the NEO itself, uh, you need, you, based on the financial reports, they're based on the, how many contracts yes. you see, okay. how many quality delivered. Mm. I mean, this could be a reason because from capital markets, they say from different perspectives. Mm -hmm. They say how many cars you delivered. Uh, this is critical. So if you see the financial report, then you should be able to see why the price is underperformed. Mm -hmm. Okay. And our last question also comes from the community. Um, it's really about the threat, so the competition mm. um, element. So over here, they want to know um, neo market share in China EV industry and whether they have gained the support from the government. Yes, of course. But Tesla in China and Tesla threat to other EV companies in China, how, you know, like from an investment perspective, yep. How much should we care about this sort of high competition between the Chinese EV market and Tesla? Okay, I think if you're aware of the news, I think just one day before the new year, mm. uh, I think 31st of December, 30 December, Tesla just increased the Model 3 price yes. to uh, over 300,000 RMB. 
<laughs> the 300,000 is a threshold, which yeah. is very important because if the car price is less than 300,000, the consumer can get a tax rebate. So Tesla has increased the price, mm -hmm. and which means they have full confidence that China consumers will willing to buy, <laughs> even though it increased the price. Yes. And in the meantime, as we mentioned just now, NIO reduced the price. They introduced a new model, which sell at 250,000 RMB. Mm. So it's kind of thing. Now Tesla is going to increase the price. The China brands reduce, bring the cheaper brand to the consumer. So of course, <laughs> there must be some unique selling points to attract the new consumers. I mean, not to say Tesla is, is it will win the win the win this pr mm. price war, mm. but uh, China, all these brands, they do have their own unique selling points. Mm. Yeah. Okay. It will be competitive. At the end of the day, it's still a competitive industry because every all the capital, all the efforts, all the R and D, is going into this yeah. industry. Yeah. Oh, okay, interesting. So the last question is actually my question. <laughs> Um, I would like to know, so in terms of the brand image and the perception of the brand in terms mm. of influencing the stocks, yes. right? Tesla has Elon Musk. Yep. What about China? China, they have the same because if you hear the news, <laughs> the news, I, I want to replace the BBA. BBA in China is very famous because they have a, a it stand for Mercedes Benz and the BMW mm. and the Audi. So they want to replace one of the brands. So mm -hmm. They have the ambitions to do so, but just money for Elon Musk, they have other industries. This yeah. is well known, or everyone knows about him. He has Correct. Twitter. <laughs> yeah, he has Twitter, yes. And also, he become the idol for most of the young people. Uh, I'm pretty, pretty sure, as the, because China market is going to, to be more competitive, so one company will be outstanding, then this, the leadership character will make a huge difference. Mm. I mean, not now, but we see how it goes. If as the China, as I think because November, China, 90% mm. of the cars delivered to the consumer are EV. Mm. If the number, this mm. figure increases yeah. to 29%, 39%, yes. I'm pretty sure some equivalent, Elon Musk equivalent <laughs> leader in China. Well, who knows what's coming? Yeah, who, who knows? Yeah, who knows? Yeah, name. Okay, so our next question is really about investment strategy. What is the difference between investing in EV ETF versus EV stock? Oh, this is a very good question because yeah. uh, apparently uh, for all these new to the investments or mm -hmm. new to stock, they, would, they may wonder what's the difference between ETF and uh, single shares. Uh, mm -hmm. I think the answer is very simple because for ETF is a passive investment. So for mm -hmm. this ETF, they will track the index, they will track certain shares. But if I say you will invest in certain single name, a uh, single share, which means you invest in one company, mm -hmm. then of course you need to do your own research. You need to know what they are doing, how much they spend on R and D, yeah. what is the next pro progress of their products. Yeah. So if you don't have time, of course you might get a higher return. But if you don't have time, you just want to do some passive investment, you find this sector, this EV sector could mm. be the next emerging point. Love that. Yeah, ETF mm. could be the another option for you. Yeah. Okay. It's uh, still a passive versus active. That's a great point for the passive and active strategies. I think I myself learned a thing or two, and I hope you guys as well. Thank you so much, Josh, for joining us today. <laughs> You're most welcome. And it's my honor to share all this, my, my view with you mm. guys. And my dear audience, thank you for taking a seat at the table and joining in on the conversation. So we'd love to know what you think about EV markets or anything with your 2022 investment strategy for our next episode. So comment down below on your questions or anything that you're looking out and we'll pick a few for our next episode. Like, subscribe and stay tuned for our next show. We'll see you next time.